Okay, so um, imagine like a treasure chest. You open it up, hmm. and inside you find another smaller treasure chest. Okay. And inside that, there's another even smaller one. You know, just like an endless series of chests within chests. I, I see what you're going for. Yeah, and that's kind of uh, what we're going to be looking at today. It's this really mind-bending new discovery about the nature of infinity. Hmm. Mathematicians, they found new types of infinity. Like, not just larger infinities, but, like, fundamentally different. They're called exacting and ultra-exacting cardinals. Mm. And uh, and they're challenging how we understand how infinity is structured. We're working from some pretty dense material today, though. We got 50 paragraphs of hmm. hardcore set theory, then another 50 of just analogies. Uh. Yeah. But, um, but we're going to distill the most fascinating points for you and hopefully make them come alive. So even if the math feels a bit intimidating... I promise these concepts are really mind blowing. Mm -hmm. So just to start, I think we should touch on some basics. We all have an idea of what infinity is, right? Mm -hmm. Just something that goes on forever. But in math, we use something called cardinal numbers to talk about the size of infinite sets. Yeah, and what's so interesting is that not all infinities are actually the same size. Right. You have the set of all natural numbers, one, two, three, so on. That seems pretty infinite. Yeah, first But then you've got this set of all real numbers, which has all the decimals and fractions and everything in between, and that set's actually bigger. Exactly. That was this, well, this huge discovery made by George Cantor way back in the 19th century. Oh, yeah. He showed that there's a hierarchy of infinite sets, some just more infinite than others. Mm. But it doesn't stop there. We also have these things called large cardinals. And they're not just bigger infinities, they're more like signposts that tell us something really deep about the entire set theoretic universe. They're sort of like a stress test for mathematical theories in a way. They test the limits, force us to re-examine how sets actually work, measure the consistency strength of a theory, how much it can handle before it falls apart. Yeah, so where do these exacting and ultra-exacting cardinals fit into all of this? Right. Well, this is where things get super interesting. These new cardinals bring in this crazy idea of self-referentiality to the world of infinity. They basically contain copies of their own defining structure within themselves. Mm. Kind of like those Russian nesting dolls, right? Mm -hmm. You open one and there's a smaller version inside. Yeah. But here, it's with infinity. Oh, wow. So how is that even possible? It's pretty remarkable, right? Yeah. This self-similarity is tied to this concept we call structural reflection in set theory. Okay. The idea is that patterns or properties of the entire universe of sets are reflected in these smaller parts. I see. But what makes exacting and ultra-exacting cardinals so special is they have this self-referentiality much more than anything we've seen. Okay, so these cardinals are showing us that infinity isn't just bigger than we thought. It's more intricate, yeah. self-reflective in ways we never really considered. Yeah. But here's the thing. This isn't just some cool mathematical thing. It could actually change how we see this big unsolved problem in set theory, the HOD conjecture. Right. So the HOD conjecture asks this basic question about the entire universe of sets, called V, and a specific subset of it called HOD, which is short for hereditarily ordinal definable sets. Yeah. Okay, That's I'm lost already. Wild. Can we break that down? What are V and HOD and why should we care about them? Okay, so imagine V like a huge library with every single book you could possibly imagine. Okay. Every topic you can think of. HOD is like this curated section of the library. What's he? It only contains books that can be described using this very specific limited language. The HOD conjecture is asking how much of that whole library's information can be captured by that curated subset. Right. Are they basically the same? Or is V inherently more complex than HOD? Okay, I'm starting to see it. So if I'm getting this right, these exacting cardinals suggest that V, the full library of all sets, is wilder and more unpredictable than anything HOD can capture. Exactly. It's like saying that there's stuff in the universe of sets that can't be defined in any simple way. Yeah, it's like finding this secret room in that giant library filled with books written in a language we don't understand yet. That's amazing. So <laughs> these new types of infinity are self-referential, and they're implying that the universe of sets is even more complex and mysterious than we thought. But how do mathematicians even wrap their minds around this stuff? I mean, they must need some seriously powerful tools, right? Oh, absolutely. And that's where things get even more mind-boggling. These exacting cardinals are connected to something called I0 embeddings, which are incredibly powerful tools in set theory. Yep. They're like um, 
They're like special lenses. They let mathematicians map the whole structure of infinity onto itself. But it keeps all the important properties, like making a perfect copy of the infinite universe inside itself. Whoa, so you're saying it's like taking infinity and folding it in on itself like a piece of paper. Yeah. But not just two layers, right? Like infinitely many, each one a reflection of the whole thing. That's a pretty good way to think about it. How is that even possible? It's really something, isn't it? And the really remarkable thing about ultra-exacting cardinals is they tell us these ILE embeddings can happen way lower down in the large cardinal hierarchy, lower than we thought. Huh. It's like finding the secret passage in that infinite library, taking you right to the most mysterious parts. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we don't have to climb this endless ladder of bigger, bigger cardinals to get to these embeddings. We might be able to find them earlier on because of these ultra-exacting cardinals. Exactly. It's like you're finding a secret elevator. Yeah. In that infinitely tall skyscraper we talked about. Right. You step in on the ground floor and boom, you're at the top. You can see the whole thing. Exactly. It really changes how we understand how these levels of infinity connect. It's more intricate than we thought. A web of relationships. Like we're seeing a whole new dimension to infinity, right? We thought it was this straight line, this ladder we had to climb. Yeah. But now we see these paths and mm -hmm. shortcuts, mm -hmm. connections between different levels. You know, what's really interesting is how this connects to the history of large cardinals. Every time we find a new type, it's like a new lens to see the whole mathematical universe. And these new lenses, they often lead to breakthroughs mm -hmm. in other parts of set theory, too. It reminds me of like when scientists invent a new instrument mm -hmm. and suddenly they can see things that were always there but were hidden, like the telescope. Exactly. That let us see distant galaxies. Or the microscope, you know, the tiny world of microorganisms. The measurable cardinals. They really changed how we understand these things called elementary embeddings. Wow. They're kind of like IZ embeddings. They connect different parts of the set theoretic universe. And those embeddings changed fields like model theory, descriptive set theory. These fields deal with the logic of mathematical models and the properties of sets. Wow, that's incredible. So it wouldn't be surprising if these exacting and ultra exacting cardinals end up changing other parts of math too right yeah leading to new discoveries things we can't even imagine yet it's definitely possible the properties they have this self-referential thing <laughs> the connection to iz embeddings it could open up whole new areas of study they could even help us solve problems that have been around for ages it's pretty amazing to think about these really abstract ideas, these new kinds of infinity. Yeah. They might change things in ways we don't even know yet. Yeah. But I'm sure some people listening might be thinking, okay, all this is super cool. Right. But what's the point? Yeah. Does this actually affect my life in any way? That's a really good question. It's one that mathematicians think about a lot. Yeah. In a way, studying large cardinals is just about knowledge. It's a quest to understand the foundation of math. Driven by curiosity. We just want to know. Okay. But there's also a deeper reason beyond just the theory. Oh, okay. I'm listening. <laughs> How can something this abstract be relevant to anything practical? Well, think about it. Math is the language of science. Right. It's behind everything. Physics, engineering, computer science. Well, the more we know about the basics of math, about numbers and sets, the better our tools are for understanding the world. So it's like we're making the foundation stronger for all of science. Even if we don't see the direct application of these concepts now, they're making the base stronger for everything we build on top. Exactly. Large cardinals. <laughs> Even though they seem so weird, they can impact all of science. By pushing the limits of math, we make it possible to discover new things everywhere. It's like we're discovering new horizons, right? Mm -hmm. Not just in math, we're... but in how we see the universe. Absolutely. We yeah. thought it was this line. But now we're seeing all these hidden paths. And it all begins with curiosity. Just asking basic questions about things like infinity. And using our imagination to find the answers. That's what drives progress in math and in all of science. You know, at the beginning of this deep dive, I have to admit, I was a little intimidated. Yeah. All this technical stuff. Right. But as we're going through these ideas. Yeah. I'm starting to feel this real sense of awe. It's like we're getting a glimpse into this infinite world. And it's amazing and humbling at the same time. I completely understand it's easy to focus on the details. But when you see the big picture, it's breathtaking. Yeah. These new types of infinity show how powerful math is and how beautiful. And they remind us that there's so much more to discover. 
deeper layers to find. And that's what's so exciting about this. We're not just learning about these new math objects. Yeah. We're seeing what's possible, what infinity can really be. Yeah. It's like we're going beyond what humans can usually think about. Exactly. And who knows what we'll find as we keep exploring. These exacting and ultra-exacting cardinals are just the start. They're like signs pointing to deeper mysteries, even more profound truths about math and the universe. So we've been talking about like the technical details, these exacting and ultra exacting cardinals, mm -hmm. their crazy properties, how they could impact set theory. Yeah. But what about the people involved? Right. Like, what does this say about math? Yeah. About what humans can understand? I mean, how do mathematicians even think of this stuff? It's amazing, isn't it? The power of the human mind. These mathematicians, they're not just playing with numbers. Right. They're pushing the limits of what we can even imagine. It's like they're explorers, right? going into the unknown. Yeah. No map, just a thirst for knowledge, driven by adventure. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. And just like explorers found new continents, these mathematicians are finding new territories in math, showing us things we never thought possible. It makes you wonder what else is out there. Yeah. And it's not just one brilliant person, is it? It seems like a lot of collaboration, building on each other's work. Absolutely. These exacting and ultra-exacting cardinals, they're the result of decades of research. Lots of mathematicians all working together, sharing ideas, pushing each other further. Yeah. One thing that really struck me when I was reading about this, the way they use analogies to explain these complicated ideas, uh, yeah. it's like they're building a bridge between math and everyday life, hmm. using metaphors we can understand. Analogies are so important, especially with these abstract ideas. They help us grasp the main point without getting lost in the technical stuff. Right, like the Russian nesting dolls for exacting yeah. cardinals. Or the universe of sets as this huge library. Yeah. I can actually picture these structures now and get a sense of how complex they are, uh -huh. even if I don't get the math behind it. And what's even more amazing, those analogies do more than just simplify things. Oh. They often reveal deeper meanings. Like the fractal analogy for infinity. It shows the idea of repeating patterns at different levels. That's key to these new cardinals. I see. It suggests that there might be this structure to infinity, something fundamental we're just starting to see. So the analogies themselves help us explore, right? They help us see things differently, what? make connections we might miss otherwise. It's like the words we use shape how we understand. Exactly. They're not just for people who don't know math. They're part of how we discover and understand, even for experts. Yeah. They let us use our intuition, our imagination, to get new insights. Now, some people might be wondering, what's the point of all this? Yeah. This mm -hmm. deep dive into infinity. Right. Does it do anything for us in the real world? That's a big question. One that's been around for a long time. Yeah. Some people say knowledge is its own reward. Okay. That understanding the universe is important in itself. It makes us appreciate the beauty and complexity of everything. So it's like the universe is more beautiful when we understand it, even if those ideas seem abstract. Exactly. But there's also a practical side to it. The more we know about how math works, the better we get at solving real world problems. Mm. Like in science, engineering, yeah. other fields, we have all these examples. Right. Things that seemed purely theoretical in math, but then boom, they're used for something practical. Sometimes years, even decades later. It's like those discoveries about numbers that end up changing technology. Exactly, like yeah. number theory. It used to be just this abstract thing, yeah. no practical use, but now it's vital for cryptography. Mm -hmm. Secure communication. It's how we keep our information safe online. Right. So who knows what amazing things might come from this new understanding of infinity and sets. What inventions will be possible because of this? It's like we're seeing the potential of math to create new things. With every discovery, there are more possibilities. And who knows what we'll find next? What connections, what uses we might uncover as we keep exploring? That's the exciting part. Math is a journey that never ends. There's always something new to find. And each discovery changes how we see the universe and ourselves. It's humbling, but also really inspiring. It shows us that there's always something to learn, new places to explore, and that humans can understand things that seemed impossible before. So as we wrap up this deep dive into exacting and ultra-exacting cardinals, I'm left with this feeling of awe and wonder. Math is so powerful. I'm really curious about what other secrets are out there. I feel like we've only scratched the surface. I know exactly what you mean. Exploring infinity is a journey without an end. It shows how much humans can do, how much we can explore and discover and create. I'm excited to see what we find next. Me too. And we'd love to hear what you think. 
What did you learn from our deep dive into these new types of infinity? Did you find it as amazing as we did? Join the conversation online, use the hashtag, hashtag the deep dive, and until next time, keep exploring those infinite possibilities.